the history of human evolution is rather short when compared to the vast epochs of time that have preceded it, however the distinct characteristics which mark the story of human development are truly incredible. Scientific evidence shows that our evolutionary lineage diverged from chimpanzees sometime between 8 and 6 million years ago. Early examples of such hominids include Sahelanthropus chadensis, which roamed North Central Africa. Others, such as Aurora intergenensis and Ardipithecus cardaba, lived in Eastern Africa, where many fossil fragments were discovered in the Ethiopian Rift Valley. It is debated whether or not these early hominids were bipedal and walked on two legs, however what is certain is that they lived in habitats that consisted of forests, woody savannas and open water areas. We do not know for certain which fossil represents our direct ancestor, however these fossils do tell us much about our ancestors during the period hominids began to split from chimpanzees. Around 4 million years ago, several different Australopithecine species began to emerge as a hominin subtribe. Close relatives of humans, these small and ape-like creatures were bipedal and walked upright but still partially lived in trees. There is evidence that Australopithecines may have used stone tools, with the earliest stone tools dating to 2.6 million years ago. Cat marks produced by stone tools were also found in Ethiopia which dated back 3.3 million years. Sexual dimorphism in primates such as Australopithecus safarensis can lead us to speculate that they had a polygamous society, however this is extremely controversial as there is very little evidence for early hominin social behaviors. Australopithecines were omnivores who inhabited a wide range of habitats, open grasslands, woodlands, shrublands, and lake or riverside forests. They were likely hunted by competing predators of the time, such as big cats and hyenas, and survival was always an issue. The brain size of Australopithecines was approximately 461 cubic centimeters. Australopithecines coexisted with other hominids, including members of the genus Paranthropus. While Australopithecines were omnivores, Paranthropus appear to have been primarily herbivores, possessing large jaws with big teeth with which to chew tough vegetables. The branch appears to have disappeared around 1.2 million years ago, although their cousins Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis did survive. The brain size of paratropines was around 517 cubic centimeters. Homo habilis emerged around 2.3 million years ago. While primarily bipedal, they may have been at least partially arboreal. In contrast to Australopithecines, Homo habilis appears to have consumed a large amount of meat by way of scavenging. It is possible that Homo habilis lived in small groups of between 70 to 85 individuals, with male members capable of defending the group against larger predators such as crocodiles, hyenas and big cats. Homo habilis utilized stone tool technology in the old iron industry. These stone tools were simple, made with one or a few flakes chipped off with another stone, and were primarily used to butcher and skin animals, crush bone, to saw and scrape wood, and to cut plants. Stone tools manufactured in the old iron industry do not require planning, so while it does not require high levels of cognition it does however indicate a knowledge of basic mechanics and a degree of coordination. The brain size of Homo habilis was approximately 648 cubic centimeters. Homo erectus began to appear around 2 million years ago. It is debated amongst scientists whether or not Homo agaster, a hominid who emerged around the same time, is in fact the same species as Homo erectus, but more research is needed. The societies of Homo erectus were likely structured along similar lines to that of Homo habilis, clustered together in small multi-male groups capable of defending against large savanna predators. However, one important distinction is that Homo erectus had faster brain growth rates than modern humans. This, 
coupled with the fact that Homo erectus is not cognitively comparable with modern humans, can lead us to the conclusion that Homo erectus likely did not exhibit the same degree of maternal investment or child-rearing behaviors found in modern humans. In addition to this, Homo erectus is thought to be the first hominid group to practice monogamy. Again, however, we can only hypothesize about this and the matter is still up for debate. Like Homo habilis, Homo erectus ate large quantities of meat. Because increasing brain size is often associated with a meatier diet and higher caloric intake, it is possible that this is the reason they began to develop larger brains. Homo erectus may have been the first to develop a hunting and gathering food collecting strategy in response to this heavier dependency on meat. Homo erectus is the first human ancestor proven to have used fire, with the first reliable evidence for control of fire being found in Wonderwork Cave in South Africa dating back to one million years ago. The first recorded usage of controlled fire outside of Africa comes from Israel and dates to 780,000 years ago. It has been proposed that artificial lighting produced by fire may have led to increased waking hours in Homo erectus, as apes generally awake from sunrise to sunset. The first man-made structures found in the archaeological record can also be dated to the period of Homo erectus, in particular a 3 by 4 meter dwelling discovered in the modern Czech Republic dating to approximately 700,000 years ago. The shelter consisted of a vaulted roof made of thick branches supported by a foundation of earth and large rocks, and was probably used as a winter base camp. Homo erectus improved upon the stone tools of their ancestors, developing the Acheulean industry which was characterized by the use of bone, antler or wood to shape stone tools, which ultimately yielded more control over the shape of the finished product. In addition to this, Acheulean hand axes were worked symmetrically and on both sides, an innovation over earlier stone tool technology. Acheulean artifacts have been discovered on isolated islands that were never connected to land in the Paleolithic era, which may be evidence of seafaring by Homo erectus one million years ago in Indonesia. If true, this would demonstrate that Homo erectus had great capacity for planning. The earliest evidence for Homo erectus art comes in the form of an engraved shell from Java dating between 546 to 436,000 years ago. The geometric markings carved into the surface are indicative of pattern, and could potentially be considered evidence of symbolic behavior. Acheulean disc beads have been found in northwestern Africa, France and Israel. Homo erectus was also the first human to intentionally collect and use red-colored pigments known as ochre. Homo erectus possessed a bar-shaped hyoid bone in their throat, meaning that they lacked the anatomical ability for modern speech. The last known occurrence of Homo erectus is between 117,000 to 108,000 years ago on the island of Java, and it is likely that sudden climate change played a substantial role in their extinction. Their brain size was around 969 cubic centimeters. Homo heidelbergensis evolved from Homo erectus in Africa around 700,000 years ago. While they are the most recent common ancestor between modern humans and Neanderthals, many specimens likely existed well after the modern human Neanderthal split. Human dispersal above the 45th parallel appears to have been very limited during the Lower Paleolithic, with more permanent populations emerging with the spread of hand axe technology across Europe 700,000 years ago and increasing in frequency about 500,000 years ago. The increasing dependency on meat led to the emergence of sophisticated hunting strategies, with early hominid hunters beginning to use the landscape to drive animals into specific areas to encircle and kill them. Homo heidelbergensis appears to have been the first human to utilize hafting technology, in which stone points were attached to spears. Evidence for this comes from 300,000-year-old spears discovered in Germany. Early examples of art attributed to Homo heidelbergensis include a 370,000-year-old incised elephant tibia discovered in Germany. 
Homo heidelbergensis also possessed an anatomically modern hyoid bone, leading many to theorize that they were capable of some early form of language, though unfortunately this cannot be proved. Their brain size was approximately 1,204 cubic centimeters. Homo neanderthalensis, more commonly known as Neanderthals, coexisted with modern humans from 250,000 to 40,000 years ago and primarily existed in Europe. Their ancestors had split from the Denisovians between 744,000 and 644,000 years ago. Before splitting, the so-called Neanderthals migrating from Africa into Europe interbred with an unidentified superarchaic human species who were already present there, descendants of a very early migration out of Africa approximately 1.9 million years ago. Neanderthals tended to have a more robust build than modern humans, possessing wider barrel-shaped rib cages, wider pelvises, and proportionally shorter limbs. Often depicted as brute savages, Neanderthal society was actually quite sophisticated. Neanderthals utilized Mosterian stone tool technology and possibly had the ability to create fire. There is also evidence that Neanderthals weaved rudimentary clothing, made use of medicinal plants, applied medical treatments to injuries, utilized food storage and practiced various methods of cooking such as boiling and smoking. It is highly probable that Neanderthals created art, with possible examples such as cave paintings being found in Spain dating back to 65,000 years ago. Neanderthals also possessed the capacity for language, although the complexity of their language is not known. There is evidence for regional Neanderthal cultures, and it is possible that they may have migrated between caves seismically. Neanderthals are known to have buried their dead, although any potential religious or symbolic meaning behind these burials are highly speculative. When modern humans migrated to Europe roughly 42,000 years ago they interacted with the Neanderthals already living there. The extent of their relationship is not known, but what is known is that shortly afterwards, between 41,000 and 39,000 years ago, the Neanderthals went extinct. While climate change and migratory factors may have played a role in the Neanderthals' demise, it is also possible that conflict with early humans may have played a significant role as well. The brain size of Neanderthals was roughly 1,426 cubic centimeters, which is approximately on par with that of modern humans. Modern humans, known as Homo sapiens, began to emerge around 300,000 years ago in Africa. Between 170,000 years ago they began to exhibit evidence of behavioral modernity. Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa in at least two major waves. The first was between 130 and 100,000 years ago, and was brought about as a result of mega droughts which drove humans from the land and towards the sea in search of food. The second was between 70 and 50,000 years ago, in which humans spread rapidly across the southern coast of Asia reaching Oceania and Australia. In Europe they encountered Homo neanderthalensis, a branch of archaic humans with which they would interbreed to some extent. Likewise, in Asia they encountered Denisovians and Homo floresiensis, a small archaic human that lived in Indonesia. Homo floresiensis were a small species of hominids who flourished on the island of Flores in Indonesia between 190 and 50,000 years ago. They are noted for their small stature, which does not appear to have limited their cognitive skills based on the apparent size of their frontal cortex. The deep strait which surrounds the island was covered with water even at the maximum extent of the previous glacial period, meaning that the ancestors of Homo floresiensis must have traveled over water to access the island, possibly on primitive rafts or boats approximately one million years ago. In the cases of both Neanderthals and Homo floresiensis, the arrival of modern humans would correlate with the extinction of their species. 
the ancient lives and daily struggles of our ancestors were far more brutal than the modern comforts and conveniences we now enjoy. The daily suffering, abject cruelty and unforgiving harshness of the landscapes that surrounded them must have been truly profound. Scientific knowledge was non-existent, and apart from basic principles which formed the bedrock of their lives, early humans did not know much with absolute certainty. The physical suffering affected by disease, wild animals and medical emergencies had no immediate treatment. Broken bones, decaying teeth and other such physical injuries resulted in constant suffering and pain. Food may have run scarce and times and created tensions, while other times finding shelter and staying warm proved to be constant challenges. This perpetual lack of knowledge must have induced a constant state of uncertainty and fear. It is possible that early humans may have turned to a primitive form of belief and spirituality to fill in the blanks left by the absence of knowledge and understanding. The earliest evidence of funerary rites we have in modern humans comes from a grave in Israel, a double burial of what is thought to be a mother and child dated around 100,000 years ago. As modern humans began to migrate and expand around the world in the Upper Paleolithic, they began to establish distinct and unique cultures. The increasing complexity of human society and the development of improved technologies marked the beginning of the global domination of our species. Ultimately, the story of human evolution is a story of millions of years of hardship, suffering and survival, and the story of human history is one which is still being written, every single day.